economic freedom fighters want land, water and minerals to all belong to the state. They've approached the courts to get involved in land redistribution. The Red Berets want to amend the property clause of the Constitution. The ANC, on the other hand, has proposed that state custodianship be applicable to certain land. But the EFF has rejected this proposal. Let's get ANC's, ANC's stance regarding the EFF's proposed changes to the Constitution. Former ANC Treasurer General Matthews Poza joins me now. Very good evening to you. I believe that the ANC can go on its own without the EFF when it comes to this issue. How will that work? You're so wise because the ANC is not desperate about two third majority anyway in Parliament. We consulted all the parties to the right and to the left of the ANC and were satisfied that. Uh, from a democratic point of view, we have consulted properly. If there are no agreements with the EFF, so be it. The ANC will proceed in terms of Section 25, 1, 2, and 3, and implement the process of expropriation with or without compensation. That will go ahead. And of course, if you watch the news recently, the president has uh, allocated a large tracts of land in Tafel Corp. That's part of what the ANC has been doing. It will continue to do. And you must understand that uh, the ANC has the responsibility, to, to historical responsibility, not to mess up the economy of this country, not to deter investments into this country. And then uh, we won't listen to populist arguments which are not informed by any practical experience on land. We will not agree to a system where we destroy our economy after so much effort of coming out of sanctions. We won't destroy the agricultural space. We will make sure that the land, urban and rural, is redistributed in an equitable and fair manner. There is no way we are going to look back because there is no majority in parliament for us. We won't proceed and do what we have to do as a party. party. Okay, what sort of impact will it have on rural land ownership? And if state custodianship is only a applicable to certain lands, tell us more about how it will work out on the ground. Already, already, this, a lot of land is uh, in the custody of the custody of the, custody of the state. Is there, and there's five million available, five million hectares available to be distributed immediately. So there are no issues here. I mean, uh, we should not uh, listen to, you know, noise and then a graduate noise to something else of substance. We will go ahead. We'll distribute the five million hectares of land. We will continue to execute expropriation of land without compensation or with compensation. I'll give you an example. Where there's an uh, improvement on the land, what right do we have as government to expropriate without compensation? We cannot do that. It's almost bordering on criminality. We should be very responsible in a dealing with this matter of land. It's of national importance. It's sensitive. It should not be sensationalized, either by all of us or even journalists. Uh, I mean, I should imagine that investors will be pleased, as will uh, Tabo Mbeki. He was saying that plans to expropriate land without compensation will drive away investment and reinforce tribalism. He says if we went that route, it would be a disaster. I'll give you an example. If you talk to the Koi and the Sons, and I do act for them in certain instances where they require recognition, and I do this so as a lawyer in good pride, they say that uh, you know, they were the first one in 1488 to come to this country. The question is, and this is can problematize it, do you start 1488, do you start 1652, do you start 1913, when do you start? If you deal with land in reverse, and I, re I repeat, you cannot deal with the issue of land in reverse, you'll, you'll find yourself with tribal wars between blacks as well. Mm. All right, what sort of time frame are we looking at, and where does this leave your relationship with the EFF who wants to go to the courts to get their way? Well, you've got the other parties. The EFF is not the only party. We've spoken to the DA, which to us, it, it doesn't seem to care them about the black... Uh, uh, people. So we, 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 we just dismissed them. The, the Freedom Front uh, Plus, well, is still looking for a Buddha start. Of course, we don't agree. Uh, and then, of course, we've got uh, the ATM. They're very interesting to talk to. They, they sound like the babies of EFF, and we were joking after the meeting with them, but it's their right to take those positions. And uh, the, the, the Al-Jamal we spoke to, the, uh, the, the, 
the, the Ms. Magwaza's party, NLP, whatever you call it today, was very, very constructive, I must say. The Christian party was more or less closer to the DA. So we don't want to, to go beyond that consultation. The EFF, for the record, let me put it straight, we met them twice, more than any other party. And in the third meeting, they didn't turn up. So let's not be fooled. They were given a third opportunity they did not honor. So where we are sitting, we have consulted enough, we need to move on. You once said that 90% of land reforms are unsuccessful. How will you make this successful? Watch the space. We're going to ensure that the expropriation bill is uh, fast-tracked and is passed in Parliament. Other than that, we have Section 25, 1, 2, and 3. We're going to implement those things with speed. All right, Matthew Spoza, very good to talk to you. Thank you very much for that.